Governor, let's move to foreign policy, national security. Um, if we're still in Iraq, what would you do immediately after taking office, and how would you deal with the Iraq situation? The first thing I do is to call a summit of all of the nations in that region, including the UAE, the Kuwaits, the, uh, the Saudis, uh, Turkey. We would uh, sit down with, uh, with Jordan and every other nation in that region. Obviously, Iran probably wouldn't uh, want to participate. But all those nations that pledged billions of dollars to the securing of Iraq. If you saw yesterday's front page of the USA Today, you probably saw that of those pledges that they made into the billions, most have paid a pittance of what they pledged to help in this effort. So it means that the United States is paying the full freight. And I look at them in the eye and I say, look, let's make this real clear. We've paid for it both sides. Our tax dollars in America have paid for the military that's tried to bring stability to it, but our oil dollars that have made you rich has ended up going to fund the very madrasas that trained the terrorists in the first place because a lot of the oil money, that's where it ends up. Terrorism takes a lot of money. And these training camps and the travel and all, where do they get that money? They get it from oil dollars. That's where they get it. And I make it real clear to the people who have not paid up on their pledges that this is your neighborhood. And if it, if it goes up in flames, you're going to get scorched before we will. And yes, it will hurt us in the United States, and it will create a vacuum into which Al-Qaeda can create a base, or Iran can come and invade and maybe capture territory that they sure have wanted for a long time anyway. There are a whole lot of scenarios, none of which are good, if we just pull out and let this thing go up. But I make it real clear to them that the American people are not going to continue to let their own roads and bridges and airports choke while we're rebuilding those in Iraq. And at the same time, we're financing a war for your benefit, and you're not even helping us pay for it. We're paying not just with dollars, we're paying with the blood of American men and women. And that day has got to come to an end, and the day that you're going to start paying for it starts on my first day as president. That's the first thing I do. Please, please, we're taking written questions. Thank you very much. You're listening to the Commonwealth Club of California radio program with former Arkansas governor and 2008 Republican presidential candidate. Let me address one thing. I appreciate you coming. Can I, can I say something to you? The good thing is you're in a free country and you can make your statements, and we respect that. And let me express thank you very much. You know what? The beauty of America is that a person can come and even make a disruption. And you know what? That person is not going to be taken out and shot. In many places, in many places on this planet, a person who disrupted a public event and challenged a person running for office would be taken out and summarily executed. We live in a great country, folks, that a person can make her statement, and she's going to get to be heard. She'll probably get... Nice little story on the news tonight for having disrupted this. But this is a free country and free speech. Now, we like to have it so it's orderly and respectful of others. And hopefully everybody will abide by that. But, you know, you may say, oh, that was a terrible thing. No, it's a wonderful affirmation of who we are as a nation. I celebrate that we had the disruption for this reason. It's a reminder to me and to every one of us of the incredible blessing of being in a country where a person can even disrupt a public gathering and will probably not spend a night in jail over it, will not be put aside as a political pr prisoner for years. Try that in Cuba. <laughs> Try that in Iran. <laughs> if you'll be sleeping in your own bed tonight, <laughs> trying that in several, try that in North Korea. And that's why I say, let's not be angry at that person. Let's just be grateful that once again we're reminded of how grateful we ought to be to be citizens of the United States of America. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor. Let's promote democracy in Iraq. Let's bring our soldiers home. Let's Please. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, five years of occupation. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And when you run for president, you'll get a chair up here, the microphone, and everything that comes with it. Only in San Francisco. No, no, it happens even in South Carolina and Iowa and all the other places on earth. But that's, again, it's what I love about America. We still get to say that, and thank God for it. Good. Uh, again, in the international area, 